home and saw the king. And then they kept, they uh, went to their father, talking to him. They agreed on, uh, you know, well, let's take him and throw him into the well. Uh, one of them said, no, don't kill him. He still has this, no, why should we kill him? Maybe you can just cast him, throw him into this water well, and somebody will get him, and whatever we're looking at, we will achieve it. He will be far, and no more competitions or anything. They get to the father. Yeah, Why don't you, feel you trust us with Yusuf? We just want to go get him with us, go have some fun, play, join us. He, he was trying to you know, hide. He said, no, no, it's not that I... I'm really worried that the wolf might eat him. And you're not paying attention. Why not you not paying attention? So they said, no, no, no. We are a group. We are a big group. It's not going to happen. We are a big group. They got Yusuf. They throw him into the well. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was there from the beginning. And Allah is aware of everything. No three people talking secretly except Allah is the four. Not four, except he is the five, he is the six. Allah is with you wherever you are. Parents are looking at you. Police is looking at you. Somebody is watching you. Or not. Allah is always with you. Please pay attention to this fact. We as Muslims, we are dealing with Allah. Wherever we are, even if we are alone, Allah is watching. He's not going to force you to do this or that. Send an angel to force you to do that. He's just watching and he's aware. So Allah made wahi to him, inspired him that that will not be unknown the Amri in Hadi. Ta'ala Shaykh Ali, join us. Join us here, join us here. Don't get to the dark areas. Join us here. Participate. Later on, inshallah, you'll be leading sessions like that soon. Maybe now. Why not? Participate. So Allah told him that you would be out and you will be at the end telling them about all of that. So that probably gave him some kind of assurance. And long story short, they, we all know those people came, uh, tried to get water. Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam got to the, the role. They got him. They were so happy because this is this is some money. They will sell him and gain money. But then he was not as happy because this is a little boy. It's not going to be worth much. They ended up in their way to Egypt, they got him, and he went to Egypt. If you want to play, you can go to the community room, otherwise join us. So, they got to Egypt, they sold Yusuf alayhi salam, he is now ended up being a slave, even though he is, he knows himself, the prophet, son of a prophet, son of a prophet, prophet Yaqub, known in Palestine, and from a very good family and everything, but ended up being sold, uh, being taken to a different country, nobody knows him, and he ended up in the house of Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz is the title of one of the ministers of Egypt, and then not the, the, the president or not the leader, the, the biggest one, but one of the ministers. Some views mention, mention he was like Raisul Wazara or the prime minister. He ended up being a slave there, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cast this love for him in the heart of this man. He said, Be generous to him. Uh, maybe we take him as a son later on. So Sayyidina Yusuf salam ended up being there. Now we have to have a quick stop in here. Imagine sometimes we as humans, we get into the middle of something that everywhere we look it's dark. Nothing is clear. I have no clue. Why is this happening to me? Right? Does it happen to us sometimes? It happens that you, are, you feel helpless. Yusuf salam, what could he do? What could he be thinking at this point? Can you share with me? Imagine you are there. Taking from your family, very young, very young child. He was 12, some narration mentioned he was 12, young age, and had to go through all of that, his own brothers, who were supposed to protect him. They were planning and plotting to kill him, and they ended up throwing him into the water well. And you can imagine he is begging them, please don't do it or something, but no, they insisted. And then he was taken. Maybe he is telling the people, I'm not a slave, I'm this and that. They will not listen to him. We've got you. This is uh, some money for us. They got him. What is he thinking he, as he's traveling? And then he is in the, he's being sold as a, as a, as a property or, or displayed as a property. What's going on in his mind? That's what I want you to think of. And then somebody 
bid on him, yeah, I want him, I pay that much for him. He got him. He ended up being a slave. To do what? Maybe to serve, to clean, to do. What could be going on in the mind of Sayyidina Yusuf? Think about it for a second. And gloomy, right? It's gloomy. There's no hope for me. Actually, we know the story. And Allah gives and throws a little comment in here. Allah has the power to execute his amr, his command. It's so early in the story that Allah would say that would happen. It is gloomy for Sayyidina Yusuf. All these mahan problems, issues happening to him yet, he just got into the first step towards glory. Imagine he did not make it to Egypt. He was not taken as a slave. He was not sold. The story would not continue. He would be just yeah, another little uh, happy son with his child, with his father. Or something. But no, it's hard, difficult, but that will be awwal darajat sulam al majd, the first in the stairs of the step up towards the glory that he will be Sayyidina Yusuf and he will be the king, uh, the Aziz of, of Egypt later on, and all of that will happen later on. SubhanAllah. So never lose hope. When it gets dark, when you don't know which direction to go, when you're helpless, when you're, you don't have any clue how to deal with issues, you never know. Maybe this is minha, this mihna is going to be turning into a minha. This bad situation is going to give you actually something good at the end. You never know. We learned that from the story of Sayyidina Yusuf. That, well, that's not it for Sayyidina Yusuf. That, that was the beginning. Later on, he will get into fitna til the seduction from this beautiful lady that he works for her that she owns him and he was so handsome he had a half of all the handsomeness of anybody that's he got, he got half of it he was so attractive Sayyidina Yusuf and it's mentioned in the hadith that people when they get to Al Jannah men they will be as handsome as Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam Ala Jamal wa Husn Sayyidina Yusuf ala Surah Adam, the shape and body of Adam. Uh, Adam alayhi salam was how, how tall, if you remember? Six foot? Sixty feet? Uh, Ninety some feet. Imagine, that's huge, gigantic, right? We, uh, Seventy arms, uh, sixty arms, which is ninety feet. Imagine yourself, Abdullah Mubarak, if you're ninety feet. What are you gonna do? You're gonna destroy me, right? You gotta do what? I'll probably be three times out of this message. So it's not gonna be fit for you anymore. <laughs> you have to go pray. <laughs> Subhanallah, that's gonna be how people will be in Jannah. Take one step, you're gonna be home, right? Another step, at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> so Subhanallah. So Sayyidina Yusuf was so handsome and attractive, but, and this lady couldn't resist, so she offered him. The Quran mentioned that it happened once, but from the, we could read, as we are reading, Qalat Hay now, Everything is, is ready for you. Maybe it happened before. Maybe she was trying to, you know, approach him not directly before, and every time he is ignoring that. Until she got to the point of locking him into one room and getting everything ready, and she said, Hey, Talak, now it's time. I need you. Clearly. No more tell me had, no more, you know. And, you know, he was subhanahu. As a human being, he thought of it for a second. But then, here is the power of a believer. Power of a believer is in, if you cling in to the awamir Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa to Allah azza wa jalla himself. Ma'ad Allah, no, this is not fit for me, I can't do that. And he's trying to protect himself and she's attacking him or she's approaching him until he, he's running to the door, she's running behind him. She got, she caught him from the shirt, from the back and she, she tore uh, the, or, or the shirt was torn because she is pulling him and he is fleeing from her. At this moment, the Quran tells us the, open, the door opens. They saw the husband was there and he saw that. What's going on? And she would turn right away. He was trying to attack me or to, you know, do that to me. Another bad situation, horrible situation for Sayyidina Yusuf being completely innocent. And yet, he's being uh, uh, accused of something that he's... 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will flip it. وَشَهِدَ شَهِدُ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا The Mufassirun mentioned that was a little child in the cradle, not talking yet. Allah will give him a miracle and he will talk, he will say, إِنْ كَانَ قَمِيسُ الْقُدَّ مِنْ قُبُلٍ فَصَدَفَ If the shirt is torn from the front, then he is guilty because he was approaching her, she's defending herself. But if it's from the back, then it's the opposite. She is guilty because he's fleeing, she's trying to get him from the back. They found it cut from the, the, uh, from the back. And the man was not like really man. He was like 50%, 30%. This is the youth kind of thing that he sees his wife doing something uh, uh, like that. And it's clear for him. And he said, Yusuf, I'll tell you something, Yusuf. Just cover that. Let it go. Let it go. Don't really think about it. Don't talk about it. Well, stop feeling them. Because all you need to do is just ask forgiveness and let's let it go. That would encourage the lady to even approach him more. And the story is, it's everywhere. She got all the ladies uh, to see, you know, him. And all now are trying to approach him. If he's not going to listen to us right now or to me right now, I send him to the prison. Now he's turning to Allah one more. Ya Allah. If you, Ya Allah, if you're not going to take all of these tests from me, the test through these ladies, I'm gonna, you know, listen to them and I'm gonna be from the ignorant. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this away from him, but he has to end up being in the prison. He was ordered to be taken to the prison. Another scene and another mihna, another you know, test in the life of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. Again, test after test. Why me? Why I'm tested? No. Never know. You don't think you're not God. You not. You don't plan this life. But Subhanallah, everything again would lead to the next thing. What happened in the prison is we all know two people. They saw how good Sayyidina Yusuf was. In the Naraka and the we see you good. How good he was. He's speaking nice to them. Somebody is sick next to him. He would probably go visit him. He is smiling at them. He is probably helping them when they need help. He is, he is all of these and even more. Because we see you good and doing perfect and everything. We saw a dream, maybe you know, the uh, what could it mean, the interpretation of this dream. They saw the dream, the details are there, and he ended up giving them da'wah in the nicest way, calling them to Allah, calling them, Ya Sahih, oh my, my, my friends, uh, what do you think about, you know, Arbab, uh, various lords and various gods and being torn, between so many gods, oh one god, Wahid al Qahar. The other things, it's just names that you called, you and your fathers, but it's the true God is one. He called them and he and then he gave them the interpretation at the end when he said, one of them, the interpretations of the dream is one of them uh, was the uh, offering wine to the king, that's his the one who serves the king, you know, the drink and everything. The other one can Khabaz al Malik, the baker of the of the king. So, and, and the king thought that they are plotting to kill him or something. They were cast in prison. They saw this dream. Sayyidina Yusuf told them, one of you, the dream was somebody uh, saw himself as, as if he's uh, uh, like uh, making some wine, basically. That's what he saw in the dream. The other person saw, I see myself with some bread on my head and birds are eating from it. Then he told them, one of you will be, will be dead. He didn't mention, who didn't mention, we didn't want to say, you will die, you will live. No, he said, one of you actually will end up, you know, dying and he will be crucified and birds will eat from his head. And the other person, you know, will be, will be good. It's, it's clear and obvious, but he didn't make it to. And then later on on the side, he told the one that he thought he is going to be saved and rescued. Could you please mention my case to your Lord, to your master, to the king? Just let him know, you know, my, my case. And so, Shaitan, first this man came out, he enjoyed freedom and everything, and he forgot about everything. He forgot about Yusuf and the decision, and forgot all of that. And Yusuf was forgotten there for several years. Several years. He was there. Some other Mufassirun would say, no, Shaykh Yusuf because for a little second, he counted a human being. He did not put his full trust. He put his full trust in Allah, but yet he thought that this human being could help him. That's fit for me and you, but not fit for a prophet. A prophet should put his full trust in Allah. فَأَنْسَاهُ الشَّيْطَانِ عَنْ سَيْدْنَا يُسُفْ ذِكْرَ رَبِّهِ 
weak tafsir but still could be there. Falabita, and he ended up spending more years in the prison, several more years in prison. The, the, the story will, another scene will come up when the king one day he saw a dream. Seven cows, seven fat cows, and other seven other skinny cows are eating them. What does this mean? I keep seeing this dream. He asked everybody in Egypt, nobody knows about that. And then this man remembers. He said, you know what? I was in, this, in the prison, and I know somebody who is an expert in that. Send me to the prison, I'm going to get him Yusuf. And he came to say to Yusuf, here is a dream, tell us about the interpretation. And then he gave him the full interpretation. And he gave the interpretation that there is going to be famine that will strike Egypt badly in the next few years. But this is not the only thing. He told him the solution also. He told him, in order for you to avoid that, this is what you have to do. You have to work hard, continuously farming and everything. And then, everything you collect, you keep in its ears. Keep the grain in the ears. He told them the way how to save it. Save for those next seven years. Because it's going to be drought or hard and, and everything. And then, he mentioned, uh, uh, he gave him all of that. To the end of what he, the detailed plan, uh, rescue plan that he gave him. This man came to the king and he told him everything. And he, the, the man was interested in, you know, getting Sayyidina Yusuf. And he got Sayyidina Yusuf and he talked to him. And Sayyidina Yusuf wanted to make everything, you know, clear before he gets out. You go back to the, the your lord or the king and, and let him investigate the whole issue. He got the ladies and then the ladies, this lady, uh, ended up saying the truth. He said, she said, he is completely innocent and all of that was fake, was made up, and he is completely innocent. He come out, and uh, actually the king liked him, and he said, well, I appoint you to lead the, the, the execution of your plan, and Yusuf salam will be the treasurer or and the, the minister of treasury in Egypt back then, in place of, of the man Al-Aziz. He will be Al-Aziz in place of the man who uh, bought him, and he will leave Egypt to avoid that famine back then. And not only that, all the bordering countries from Palestine and Iraq and all of these, they will come to buy and get food from Egypt uh, back then because of the hikmah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and, and he would manage. His brothers will come to him amongst so many people. He would recognize them. He would know them. They would not know him, but he, he would know them. He would know them. And he said, do you have other brothers? They said, yes, we have one more brother, but we left him with my dad. He was serving his father. He's asking about his own brother. And he secretly filled their bags and everything with food. But he told them, well, if you give me your brother and come back, I'm going to give you even more. So they came all the way to their father, to Palestine, and they opened their home. We got the food. But then you know what? He promised us if we get our brother with us, he's going to give us even more. And they kept negotiating with Sayyidina Yaqub Can you send this brother with us, our brother Benjamin with us, to go back to Egypt? No, I'm not going to do it again. How can I trust you one more time? I trusted you once with his brother, and I lost him forever. I can't do it again. They kept, you know, giving pledges for him until he ended up giving it to him. And then he told them, Don't go all of you from one door. 11 or, you know, 11 children from one family. He was afraid that some kind of uh, hasad or envy or uh, evil eye would... He said, go from different doors. We need to avoid that sometimes. Not being very obsessive or about it, but, you know, this is something to uh, worry about. We will come to Sayyidina Yusuf. Uh, he will, you know, you can imagine the, 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 you know, the emotional moment when he will meet with his brother, he will hug his brother after so many years. Uh, some scholars will say it was 40, 40, 40 years uh, that he was aware, away from his family. And then he saw his brother and he would recognize him and everything. He would make this little, make this little trick that he will put one of the containers, special containers or measures in there, uh, in the bag of his brother so he would look like a, that he stole it and then he will end up taking him. He says, you guys... We missed something and we guess you, 
you stole it, they will find it in the bag of his brother. He didn't make it. Yusuf ordered the people to put it in there just to keep his, his brother with him. They ended up losing their brother having to go back. What would they say to their father? Yeah, who that? Their older brother decided to stay. He said, I'm not going to go anywhere. You go back and tell your father, I can't face him anymore. They went to Sayyidina Yaqub. Again, imagine Sayyidina Yaqub and what he is going through. SubhanAllah. Losing his best child. And then years and years he is crying for him. And then losing the other child, the second child, the second best. And Ufawdu Amr Allah, he is all deferring his affairs to Allah. Sad and everything, but having the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then sending, he ended up sending all of his children, go and search for both of them. They said, Are you crazy? Both? What do you mean both? You still remember and think of Yusuf? It's been years and you've been crying for him until he lost his eyesight. You'll keep crying until you, you, you kill yourself. He said, he told them, I'm telling you, go try to find Yusuf and his brother and never lose hope. Never lose hope of the solution coming to you from Allah. Only disbelievers, only people who lost faith would lose hope. Never lose hope. It's very destructive. Listen for us. It's a lesson that we learn. Never lose hope. You can be sad, yes. Things could happen, yes. But never lose hope. Always count on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to solve anything because He can do anything. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They came to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. And one of the final scenes in there, not the final one. He said, do you remember what did you do to Yusuf? Yusuf. قال, هل علمتم ما فعلتم بيوسف وأخي? Yusuf. He said, You are you Yusuf? He said, I am Yusuf. And this is my brother. This is the favor of Allah. Allah favored us. And subhanAllah, again, think, see the novel people. He could have keep, you know, kept going on and on. You did that, you were wrong. And no. They said, Well, we were mistaken. Forgive us. No blame on you today. I'm not gonna do that to you. Allah, may Allah forgive you. Take my shirt, go back to my father, put this shirt in his face, a miracle from Allah, he will retain his eyesight. They did. SubhanAllah. The excess of buwa, the feeling of, of, of fatherhood. Ya'qub the minute the the minute the caravan, the, his children left Egypt, he is in Palestine, thousands of miles away. Qal, inni la Yusuf. I smell the smell of Yusuf. And then the grandchildren in there, they said, what are you talking about, Yusuf again? But this is a father. We, have, we, 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 we don't live only by material things, money and what, how much do you have? No, we have something like the, the emotions that a mother carries or a father carries. The emotions, the relationship between friends. There is so many things that could do miracles and they are much more precious than material things. The brotherhood that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi started between the believer. This is much more precious than anything. The relationship between a community, what gets us together, it's much more precious than anything. This is a father. He is sensing that, yes, a miracle from Allah, but it happens a lot to fathers and mothers that they sense something from Allah. They sense there's something good or bad could be happening, I don't know, to their children. But he sensed and he smelled, he said, he smelled it, the smell of Yusuf. And then he ended up a few days later, a few weeks, the caravan came, they put the shirt on his face, he retained his eyesight, he joined them, all of them went to Egypt. And alhamdulillah, one of the, the stories that ended up very happily for everybody. They got to say to Yusuf alayhi salam, he got his parents, he put them in the throne, all of them, they were prostrating to him which is the interpretation of the dream in the first scene that he saw, that uh, al-shams al-qamar, the his parents, and, and uh, the, the, the 11 uh, uh, planets, the 11 of his brothers, they were all prostrating for him. This was the sign of respect for that, for people at this time, showing respect. And that's what they did. The story of the Sayyidina Yusuf is, you know, uh, continued to live. Sayyidina Yaqub joined him and both lived in Egypt. Anybody remembers which state or which part of Egypt? That we said they lived in Bilbais, uh, This is where they lived. Sayyidina Yaqub lived in there, and they were not the Yeah, uh, so they, they were there. 
<coughs> but Sayyidina Abu, uh, when he passed away, he gave the wasiyah that I want to be buried with my father and grandfather Sayyidina Ishaq, Sayyidina Abu in Al Khalil, Medina Al Khalil in Palestine. They took him all the way. Yusuf السلام, did the same thing. Uh, he lived for some time after that, and then when it was time for him to die, he gave the wasiyah. He was buried in Egypt, but they were not capable of taking him until years and years later in the time of uh, Musa alayhi salam and even tell Musa alayhi salam they were able to take the repack of the remaining of his body with uh, with them. So long story but so many lessons that we learned we touched on a few of them. Would anybody anybody wants to get, uh, give maybe one more lesson whatever that you could you could share with us or if you have any question. <laughs> Someone else would, would come and say, Well, I want to tell you until I get out of the present. Right. He get, he get, he I know it, I know it, I have it, but. And he even give more than that the plan of how you can, you know, solve the problem. Right. So, this is how good people would deal and go about their life. They go from there, they are good from within. They do not have things contingent, no. They are good. They radiate goodness to others. They don't block it, they don't make conditions for it. The invocation of this is your favorite prophet. You keep telling me that, right? One of his favorite prophets, Sayyidina Yusuf. Why? Let me ask you a question first. Why is Sayyidina Yusuf is your favorite prophet? You like the story. Yalla, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, we talked about dreams, before about dreams, uh, having three categories. One of them could be because probably you ate too much or something. This is hadith, nefs, something going on. Some of them are from shaitan, they just like trying to scare you. But some of them are real dreams. Some of them are something that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of our dreams, uh, they, they could mean something and they have interpretations. Uh, and we have to be very uh, you know, serious about it, not obsessive about it. Because everybody who sees something, the, one of the instructions is do not tell your dreams except to good people. Don't mention it. the bad ones, the nightmares, don't talk about them at all. This is one of the Islamic instructions. If, if you see something, you see something good, you might go up, out and, and only trustworthy people. Uh, because if, if a dream is interpreted certain how, it will come true the same way it was interpreted. It will, even though it was interpreted wrong. So do not give you know, share such information. It's from a life, it's good, just say Alhamdulillah, inshallah, something good is going to happen. If something is bad, nothing is gonna harm you against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from him. But yes, dreams are uh, there. One question at a time. Anybody has anything else? Zach? He always has faith. Huh? He always has faith. Sayyidina Yusuf salam, this is a lesson, yes, he always had faith, imagine, you could lose your faith in the face of all of these going to prison, being accused, being taken, you could lose this power, no, he didn't lose it at any point, he was a little weaker at a certain point as a human being, but yet he is strong, never lost his faith, thank you, very good. Uh, in your introduction, when you said when it seems around you all dark, and uh, remembering that Surah Yusuf السلام, uh, revealed during the Meccan period where the, uh, the, the difficulty in front of the Prophet وسلم, and it was some kind of uh, support at the Coming beginning right at the end and so, uh, so many lessons were was, uh, given to Rasulullah uh, yes, yes, very good point so if this is what's happening to you Muhammad all Muslims look back it happens to Sayyidina Yusuf on an individual level but always there was something, <coughs> solution from Allah. Sorry. No matter how much knowledge you got, there's always somebody who knows more. Exactly. Allah Khair. Exactly. The same lesson. The, the darkest moment of your life, never lose hope. Abdullah Mubarak. 90 feet tall. <coughs> No, no, this is not a loss of hope. Sometimes you might ask help from somebody. It doesn't mean that if you ask help from somebody, you lose your hope. No. 
but there are certain levels he shouldn't have even thought like that as a prophet. It doesn't mean it's wrong. No, it's not. It's not wrong. And again, this is not this is not like the, the only way to understand it. The, the other way to understand, which is actually the more authentic way, is فَأَنْسَاهُ shaytan Shaytan made the person forget about mentioning in this, not saying the Yusuf. So the person forget about forget about uh, the story of Yusuf السلام, and mentioning it to the king, the king, and that's why Yusuf السلام, continued to be in the prison. Abdullah again. I don't know how shaitan works, but it happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last question, inshallah. Brother Abdul Aziz. Well, the statement is that when he interpreted the dream, before he interpreted the dream, he gave them the dollar from right. one God right. to give them the opportunity to accept it. That's yeah. right. Yeah, so he gave them the da'wah and he wanted to, you know, uh, give them something that they really need, especially since he knew somebody's going to, one of them is going to die. So he wanted to rescue and save him, and he uh, thought this is the right time to give them da'wah. After he served them, and he showed that level of gratitude to them, and then he would end up giving them the interpretation also. So with this, we come to the end of the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. Uh, maybe you can share with us later, Muhammad and Abdullah. I got this. Uh, but I'm sure there are a lot of lessons to learn, a lot of things to learn from say, the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam amongst uh, the other prophets as well. Uh, at this point, inshallah, we come to the end of it. May I ask the brothers, inshallah, first, uh, Sister Julie.